Shout outs to the 22 concurrent viewers. My name is VCV Sips. Welcome to the stream. We are going to be covering the PlayStation 5 Road to PS5, the specs reveal. Because this event was meant to happen during GDC. So it's mostly going to be all the technical stuff, learning about specs. We'd be lucky if you find out about new games, but that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping we at least find out about a few new games. What's up, everyone? VCV Sips. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to my channel if you're brand new. Consider subscribing if you enjoy PlayStation content. If you enjoy all kinds of online games like Fortnite and uh, Paladins and uh, League and everything in between. Warface even. I've been playing Warface. Thank you all so much for coming through. Make sure you smash the like button if you're brand new. We're going to be covering the event together. So let me know your thoughts real quick in the chat for those who are here. What are you expecting from the showcase? We'll be streaming today for about an hour and a half. Let me know what you guys think about this Road to PS5 presentation. What you expect. I'd love to know. And shout out to the 30 concurrent viewers. Thank you guys for coming through. Shout out to AllSpark Warrior. How are you doing today? Shout out to Dank Meme Center coming through. Hey, what's up? What's up, bro? Hey, Gunslinger, ooh, -woo, you ooh -wooing over here? Hey, Alexis Martinez, welcome to another stream. How you doing, Alexis? How you doing? Hey, Aiden, Rona time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, we're going to be streaming today for about an hour and a half. That's pretty much how long the presentation is going to be. The presentation is supposed to be 52 minutes long. So we're streaming now for about a half hour. And then we'll be streaming for that 50 minutes. And then we're going to spend like five minutes doing like a recap of what we saw, what our thoughts are, what my final thoughts are. Have you guys comment in the chat and also comment in the comment sections below if you're watching this in the playback to let me know your thoughts on the Rhodes PS5 presentation we're about to watch. It's starting in 26 minutes. And for those who are here, I do have a few dogs. Luckily, they don't bark that much. But if they do bark, it's not a big deal. You bit, you won't hear, really hear it much. And uh, we have 29 concurrent viewers. Thank you guys for coming through. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is VCV Sips. I do all kinds of content in gaming, live streaming, live events, reactions, kinds of all kinds of stuff. If any of that interests you, please subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 1,000 subscribers. If all of you here can help me out by smashing the subscribe button to help me reach 1,000 subscribers, that would be amazing. Thank you all so much. Gunslinger says, I'm chilling, playing a spawn in Mortal Kombat, learning his combos and damage percentages, and man, he's insane. Damn. Is he like that good? Dang me. Teraflop Wars begin. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But this is supposed to be a tech focused presentation so i could definitely understand and then gunslinger says i don't think games will be shown i expect specs reveal the console and the controller and the demo of the ps4 of a ps4 game running uh yeah i can see that happening that that's probably the most likely thing honestly shout outs to the 26 current viewers thank you guys for coming to the stream i really appreciate it so for those who are here watching let me know in the chat your thoughts on what you expect in the Road to PS5 presentation. Dank Meme says, 30 minutes of spec talk, 90% of their user base won't even understand it fully. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, anything is possible, so. <laughs> Me personally, like, I do expect just the technical stuff. Like, I agree with you, Gunslinger. But, like, if we even get to see just two games, two games would be dope. Like, come on. We need two games. And, and two, like, good games. Like, they need to tease a new Spider-Man. I think if they tease the new Spider-Man game, that'd be awesome. Because that team's been working on a game for over a year now. So I think a brand new Spider-Man game could be shown as one of the games that they're utilizing as a demo for the PS5. I, I feel like that'd be the best game to utilize. Shout out to the 32 concurrent viewers. If you're brand new to the channel, my name is VCV Sips. We're covering the PS5, Road to PS5 presentation. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll be streaming for the whole presentation, a total of an hour and a half for the first 23 minutes of us talking to the 50 minutes of the presentation. Because uh, it's been basically leaked that the presentation is pre-recorded and it's also around 52 minutes. So 
once we reach that 52 minute point we'll have like a five minute discussion between us what our final thoughts are and then we'll be wrapping up the stream after uh thank you guys so much for coming through uh i am gonna have a video releasing later today uh i wasn't gonna have a video release later today but it is gonna happen because the game's actually really good uh not to discredit the original game i love the original game too but exit the gungeon is really good guys <laughs> exit the gungeon's really good i highly recommend it gunslinger says ps5 69 teraflops confirmed ps5 over series x sony is the goat bow down to the ps5 <laughs> that's hilarious but yo i i have a bunch of ps5 games i'll show you just a handful of my favorites i have a bunch but i'll just i'll show you guys a handful oh there goes my water bottle maybe that should fall Shout out to the 28 concurrent viewers. Thank you guys for coming through. Here's just a handful of some of my favorite games on the PS4 right now. Uh, we got Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. That's my definitive favorite. I also have Bloodborne. I have that digital though. Uh, which is also, it was my favorite before I got Sekiro. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, great game. Batman Arkham Knight, amazing game. Uh, I'm so glad I got it on PS4 the other day. I got it for PS4 GameStop for $250 the other day. Totally worth it, because I originally had it on the 360 back in the day, so it's great. I did pick up Dreams recently. Uh, I'm currently making a Def Jam game, which that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. Uh, Star Wars Fallen Order. One of the best games on the PS4, and probably the best game on the Xbox, because the Xbox has no games. So, <laughs> uh, definitely top three favorite games on the ps4 easily uh persona 5 uh one of the best games on the ps4 and outer worlds you can't go wrong with outer worlds you can't go wrong with that at all so what are some of your favorite ps4 games let me know in the chat guys and all spark did i miss it no 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 it doesn't start for another 20 minutes and it's a 50 minute presentation all spark so stick around for the next hour and 20 minutes and you'll be able to experience the entire presentation yeah because we'll be finishing up the stream around 1 1 p.m i think not yeah 1 p.m 1 p.m eastern time is it when we think we're finishing this up and thank you all for coming i really appreciate it for those who don't know I am a music artist, I am a game player, I am anything in between you could really say. Uh, and yeah, I have Spider-Man, but I have that digital too, AllSpark. <laughs> and uh, Gunslinger, not an Uncharted guy, huh? I'm not a Naughty Dog guy. L I, 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 I hate Naughty Dog's games. I'll be honest. Like, I, I enjoy all of the other... <laughs> Sony exclusive games or games that were Sony exclusive at least except Uncharted series and Last of Us. I want Naughty Dog to go back to their roots, man. Their roots is what I like the best about them, the way they originally created games. Not to discredit the validity of the games that they've been making. I it's just not my taste, you know what I mean? I'm just not a fan of the gameplay. Like I don't think there's much there. But like compare well there goes all my games. <laughs> That's why you need to use two hands. And for those who are here, make sure you wash your hands. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, shout out to the 27 concurrent viewers. Like, come on. Is anyone going to tell me Uncharted, any of the Uncharted games, is better than Persona 5? Is anyone going to tell me any of the Uncharted games is better than Sekiro? Hell. If I'm being honest, The Outer Worlds is better than Uncharted. <laughs> and that's not even a PS4 exclusive. Like, guys. Guys. Uncharted is not a bad game. Just not my cup of tea. 
Thank you all for coming to the stream. Hope you're all having fun. Uh, I'm having a good time. Hope you guys are having a good time. We have 27 concurrent viewers. Thank you guys so much for making it to the stream. I really appreciate it. Uh, if y'all are here, let me know your thoughts of uh, what we have to come. And also, for those who are here, let me know how the video and audio quality is of the stream. Because how do we have 28 concurrent viewers and 7 likes? If y'all could please smash the like button. That would be awesome. Yo, we am gamer. What's up? Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much. Everyone here, please smash the like button. If you're watching the stream, smash the like button. It's right there. You're watching. 28 of you. Y'all are awesome. Show your awesomeness by smashing that like button. I would really appreciate it, guys. Cuz uh I should be editing right now and or dealing with personal stuff, but I'm here instead. So, please show your support. Thank you, guys. Allspark, what? Both of those series are amazing. Yeah, it's just my personal. I'm not a huge fan of those. And uh, what's up, Power Bean? And uh, it's starting in 15 minutes. Uh, right now, we're just talking, discussing uh, what to expect. Thank you for coming through, Power Bean. I hope you're having a good day today. How are you doing, Power Bean? And Gunslinger says, I can understand why some may not like Uncharted. It's not for everyone. Yeah, it isn't. And like, I don't know. I just liked... The original games Naughty Dog made back in the day, man. I felt like they lost a bit of their original soul. Hey, Stitched, what's up? Welcome to the stream. How you doing, Stitched? Gunslinger says, his, ga his games are God of War, Days Gone, Spider-Man, Horizon Zero Dawn, Bloodborne, Persona 5, Facts. I haven't played Days Gone, but God of War is dope, Spider-Man's fire, Horizon Zero Dawn's dope, Bloodborne's fire, Persona 5's fire. Like... That's how I see it. And, and, and then Uncharted, I'm just not there. You're doing great, awesome, Power Bean. That's great to hear. Thank you so much for coming through to watch the stream here. I appreciate it. And shout out to Power Bean for subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate it. Because we're also very close to reaching 1,000 subscribers. So that's awesome that you're here to join us for the ride. And you're here to join us in the 100% click, our community here. Thank you so much, Power Bean. I appreciate it. Uh, you're really dope too. I'm glad you're able to make it to the stream. I'm glad you think I'm pretty cool as well. Uh, the way we have this community here, I always try and get like-minded people. People who are chill, cool, laid back. That's the type of community I try and create for ourselves here. So thank you so much for coming through, Power Bean. You're a perfect fit for the community. And I really appreciate you being here and watching along with me. Thank you. And what's good, Jake Miller? Welcome to the stream. And yo, Jake Miller, I sent you that Discord link last night. Did you accept the Discord link? Because it has 24 hours. So you have to select it. And you're working but still chilling in the background. Nice, nice, bro. Thank you for coming through, man. And Strider. What's up, Strider? How have you been, man? How have you been? Strider says, what do you make of God of War? What do you think of God of War? I love the original games, but even I wanted to like the new one. I just don't like the gameplay and get into it. Um, see, Strider? That's why I said the game's dope. I didn't say it's fire. When I say something's fire, that means it's like, top of the line incredible when i say something's dope it's really cool but there's things wrong with it and i agree with you strider i personally prefer the older god of war games it's very hard to get used to the new one and or to enjoy the new one as much if you were a diehard or a super fan of the original trilogy and also the psp game that came out which is pretty good too if i'm being honest but uh yeah honestly strider you have to try and play the game god of war like it was like an Uncharted game. I know that sounds weird. But like, don't treat it like a God of War game. Treat it like it's a brand new experience. It's the only way you'll enjoy it for what it is. In my opinion. Because it's not like the original God of War games. The way you could string combos in the original God of War games. The way you can jump around and do crazy moves. It was insane. Such a fun game. Not to discredit the current God of War. I do like that game. It is a dope game. I have it. Digital though. I don't have it physical. But, I personally prefer the original God of War trilogy over the new one. But that doesn't discredit the new one. The new one's still a very good game. It was rated so highly for a reason. It's a good quality game. It's, it's just not the original God of War. And that's what it is. It's a God of War game that's not the original God of War. So Strider, that's why I would re probably recommend. Those are probably my tips. 
And uh, Allspark says, God of War, Days Gone, the Uncharted series, the whole Arkham series. Yeah, the Batman series is super dope. Super dope. And thank you so much, Gunslinger, for sharing the stream. I really appreciate it. And for those who are here, let me know how the video and audio quality is. Uh, on my end, on Streamlabs, it says it's great. But on YouTube, it's giving me a stupid little error message. So, I don't know. Just let me know what you guys think. I may have to edit Streamlabs again. But, hey, it's not like it's a bad issue on my end. This time it's on YouTube's end. <laughs> Which doesn't surprise me. Uh, for those who don't know, YouTube has no one working for them right now. They only have uh, bots doing everything for them. Gunslinger says, I think Santa Monica wanted to focus more on story than gameplay for the new God of War. But yeah, I agree. I like the older ones more. Yeah, the older ones are good. But for those who are here, 11 minutes till the road to PS5 presentation starts. Thank you all for coming through. And if you're brand new to the channel, my name is VCV Sips. 25 concurrent viewers. Let's hit 20 likes. Smash like button if you're enjoying what you're seeing. And if you're ready and hype for this presentation, uh, I really would appreciate it. We're on our way to one thousand subscribers guys let's go let's make that happen yo the chat for the presentation is going wild right now ps6 pog 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 rona 5 Who hate Xbox? Spam that, bruh. This chat's wild. And then the one guy who's normal. This is gonna be lit. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Thank you guys for coming. We're gonna do a quick set of shoutouts. Shouts to We Am Gamer. Shouts to Gunslinger. Shouts to Allspark. Shouts to Jake Miller. Shouts to Strider. Shouts to Power Bean. Shouts to Dank Meme. Shouts to all the lurkers who are here as well. Shouts to Aiden. Shouts to Alexis. Shouts to everyone who's watching. I hope you guys all stick around. We had a max of 33 concurrent viewers. Uh, I hope you guys stick around and watch along with me. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to have it uh, full screen. So let's go. We can't do this full screen yet. So yeah. Wait, do I have a stream? I should open that into this. Hold on. I could definitely do that. I'm just adding an alert box. Just so we have it. Hey, Fnatic JD, what's good? My classes got canceled. Now I can finally make it. Hey, what's up? And usually I don't even stream in the afternoons, but we're here for the PS5 specs. Road to PS5 presentation. Thank you for coming, bro. I appreciate it. Shout outs to 77. Yo, 77. That's my second favorite number, with number 7 being my favorite number, and 77 being my second favorite. Shoutouts to you, 77, for coming to the stream. Hope you're having a good time, 77. Uh, if you're down to enjoy the stream, enjoy the channel, enjoy the content we have, smash the like button, 77, and make sure you subscribe as well. We have all kinds of great content here. I really would appreciate it, 77. Thank you. We're good. We're good. Just had to make sure uh, Streamlabs was set up. Shouts to the 18 concurrent viewers. I hope you guys stick around and watch along with me. And Strider says, thank you for giving me time of day and spend time answering. That's just dope. Thanks again. Anytime, Strider. And uh, Strider, I talk to all my viewers all the time. So Strider, definitely stick around and subscribe. Uh, I'm always down to talk and give tips. And if you have anything you want to talk about with me, you can talk to me all the time, man. Uh, definitely uh, stick around, Strider, because we cover all kinds of content and video gaming and live reactions like this, tons of different stuff. So I hope you enjoy the stream, and I hope you uh, enjoy uh, what we have to see here for the Road to PS5. Shout out to Dale. Shout out to Dale. What's up, Dale? How are you doing, Dale? He said, yo, V-Sips, thanks for having me. I've been hard, hard for this for months. Can I get a shout out? Hell yeah, Dale. Shout out to Dale for coming to the stream, watching along with me, VCV Sips, for the road to PS5, as much as the rest of you that are also here watching with me. Shout out to Jake Miller, shout out to Allspark, shout out to Fnatic JD, Strider, We Am, Gunslinger, everyone who's here today. Thank you guys so much for making it to the stream. I appreciate it. And shout out to you, Dale, as well, for coming through. 
Uh, I hope you're ready because we're going to see some specs and I'm hoping we see a game. At least two games. That'd be nice. That'd be nice if we see some games. Uh, it'd be nice if they do a demo of like whatever the new Spider-Man game is going to be. That would be sick. Jake. Yep, I'm Rumboy's combat, combat in the Discord, guys. It's complicated, but the reason my name is different is for business purposes. Yeah, don't worry, I totally understand that. I understand. Everyone else here? Yeah, for, for Jake, he's going to be in our Discord because he's a 100% Click Loyal member. And uh, just his name is different. It's not Jake Miller under there. So just get that in mind. It's uh, it's Rumboy's Combat for Jake Miller. And shout out to all of you for being here. Shout out to the 23 confirmed viewers. Uh, it's starting in six minutes. So everyone, get what you need, get your snacks, get together, and uh, yeah. Gunslinger, greatness awaits. Hell yeah. Greatness awaits, baby. Hey, Strider, just subscribe. Thank you so much for coming through, Strider, and subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. And for those who are here, we are streaming tonight at 10.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, guys. Tonight, we are streaming the broadcast episode... 16 i think and we're gonna be talking about the ps5 specs and we'll be talking about a bunch of other things in the gaming world currently so thank you guys for coming to the stream i appreciate you guys a lot and yeah we do have a giveaway for animal crossing for those who want a, a copy of that check out the twitter link that dank meme posted in the chat if anyone's interested in that uh the link is in the chat by dank meme dank sony always wins hey Sony did win PS5, no, 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 PS1. Sony did win the PS1 generation. Sony did win uh, PS2. Uh, Sony beat Xbox and PS3. They didn't beat Nintendo, though, because of the Wii. Because of the casuals. You know how casuals are. They buy the Wii for Wii Sports and have it collect dust for eight years. Uh, the PS4, <clears throat> they won PS4. Because Wii U and uh, Xbox One are fucking trash. <laughs> and now there's the Switch, which is dope. And now there's the PS4, which is still dope. And now we have two dope consoles. And then there's PC gaming. And all three of those, fire. Absolute fire. Jake Miller, VC. Can we get Sony Pony Beanies? <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Sony Pony Beanies. <laughs> I really do want to start doing something like that. Like, uh... Not like a Teespring, but like selling like merchandise and stuff. But like, we're not ready for that yet. I think once we go around 2,000 subscribers, I'll start doing some merchandise here and there. Like limited quantities and all that. But we have to hit 2,000 subscribers to even hope for that. And shout out to everyone who's here. If you're enjoying the stream, smash the like button. Make sure you do. And then subscribe to the channel for added content that we drop almost every day. Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays specifically. Also... If you want to get a shout out on stream, donate, subscribe, become a patron. Those are ways that Streamlabs makes a notification pop up and then I give you a shout out. If you want that on stream, then those are the three ways to do it. And if you want to also just help support the channel, then those ways can help. Help the channel grow, help the channel get more notice in the algorithm, all that great stuff. Thank you guys so much. We did hit a cap of 32 concurrent viewers. Hopefully, we can boost it up more with three more minutes till this presentation finally starts, guys. Been a long wait. Allspark says, I already got my lunch. <laughs> what do you have for lunch, Allspark? For me, I'm obviously not eating anything just because can't eat on stream. But I'm drinking some water. Some water. Shouts to the 20 concurrent viewers. Hopefully this starts soon. Everyone, GTA 15. Bruh, these people are, are wildin'. Backwards compatibility of PS4 only. Bruh, I just saw that. It says, the person said spoiler. Only backwards compatibility of PS4. And honestly, that wouldn't surprise me if that was a thing. Hopefully that's not true. But if that's true, that wouldn't surprise me. Also, I still got my Nintendo 3DS, DS, and Game Boy Color. Damn. I wish I had all my consoles. I don't remember what happened to them. I had a Game Boy Color. I had my Game Boy Advance. I had the SP. I had the old DS. I had the DS Lite. And then I got the, D the 2DS eventually. And that was it. But then I also, I had a, P had a PS1, I had a PS2, 
I had the PS3. Now I have just a PS4. Like, I don't know what happened to half my consoles. It's like growing up, you just go to GameStop too much, and it's like, oh, shit, now they're out of business. Should have kept my shit. <laughs> but, hey, that that's just what happens, man. Shout out to the 24 concurrent viewers. Thank you for coming, watching along. The presentation starts in two minutes for the road to PS5. Thank you for coming through. Make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. And I'm hype. I'm hype. Gunslinger, you sold your 3DS? Bruh, why would you... The 3DS ain't that good, but why even sell it? <laughs> like, that that's where I'm at at this point. Like, like I never thought of it like as items to like keep like that. And I should have. And, uh... Like I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, I do have a few dogs. And, uh... They will bark every now and then, but they don't bark that much at all. So, hopefully that's not an issue. We currently... Don't have an issue right now, which is nice. So that's good. Thank you guys all for coming through. And uh pepperoni pizza and a tuna baguette. Ooh. Pepperoni pizza and a tuna baguette. I don't know how many times you just got a baguette. Hey, bars. Shout out to the 26 current viewers. 60 seconds, guys, finally. Let's see some specs. Let's go. Let's go. Go and don't worry, guys. We're gonna make it full screen in a second. Just uh, I'm gonna actually make me smaller so you guys can see even more of the screen because I'm just that much of an awesome person. There we go, guys. There we go. That should be perfect. There we go. There we go. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Hopefully, we don't get copyrighted. By any of the music in this presentation. If that happens, I will lose my shit, Sony. Don't do it. Don't do it, Sony. Let's go. Give you a good presentation, though. Let's go. Jake Miller says, My 3DS is at my XGF's house. And it sucks because my eShop was baller on the 3DS. Yeah, it also had the virtual console, too, man. Like... How does the Switch not have Virtual Console, but the 3DS has GBA games? What? Allspark says, I also still got my PS2 and PS3. Nice, nice, man. What's crazy is I've been through, like, multiple PS2s. Because there's times where I've gotten rid of PS2s just to get another one. <laughs> like, I know that sounds weird, but I've done it a bunch of times. <laughs> like, still keeping my memory cards and all that. But where is this presentation? We're late. We don't got time to be late, Sony. People got things to do. People got places to be. Start the presentation, Sony. We know it's a 50-minute presentation pre-recorded. Now start it. <laughs> and for those who are here, if I have to get up for some reason, don't worry. You guys will have this in full screen to watch. And bruh. We have to go through the whole minute and 50 seconds. We're not going to put the music on for now until it's uh, time to actually watch it. But I'm kind of disappointed. Shout out to the 31 concurrent viewers. If you are ready, we're going to watch the PS5 specs presentation. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. We do live reactions like this. Gameplay videos. Game reviews. Music. Live streams. Tons of different stuff. Subscribe to the channel. Help us reach 1,000 subscribers, guys. Please help us out. It would be really appreciated. We have a nice, cool, chill community here. The 100% click. Come through and subscribe. Content on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. From videos to live streams to songs and tons of different stuff. So thank you guys for coming through. I really appreciate it. One minute till this shit finally starts. It's supposed to be a 52-minute presentation. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we should be streaming for another hour. So like from now till 1 p.m. And once it's 1 p.m., I do have to finish the stream up. I do have to finish the stream up at 1 p.m. I have personal stuff I have to do. But until then, the next hour, we're going to relax and hang out. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it, guys. And if for some reason I do have to get up, like, I have a personal family agenda sometimes I have to deal with and handle and stuff. So, like, if I have to get up for any reason, I'll just close my little webcam area so you guys can watch the full thing without me popping up right here. But that's for that moment, not for right now. We got 29 concurrent viewers. Thank you guys for coming to the stream. Allspark, why would you leave it at your XGFs, Jake? It was borrowed because she wanted to play 3D Land back in college. I've not seen it since 2017. Bruh. We am. It's going live. Oh, shit. 
I think that's YouTube does the countdown bullshit every premiere. Yeah, but premieres, they do it all the time with this countdown BS. And the, Allspark says, my PS4 is the one that was released when they were originally released. Yeah, me too. Mine came with The Last of Us Remastered, and it's starting the road to PS5. Hi. Um, unfortunately, we had to cancel the, the talk that we had uh, planned for GDC. Um, but we do have some super exciting news about PS5. Uh, and who better to bring that to you than the one and only Mark Cerny. Without further ado, over to you, Mark. Thank you, Jane. There will be lots of chances later on this year to look at the PlayStation 5 games. Today, I want to talk a bit about our goals for the PlayStation 5 hardware and how they influenced the development of the console. I think you all know I'm a big believer in console generations. Once every five or six or seven years, a console arrives with substantially new capabilities. There's a lot of learning by the game developers, hopefully not too overwhelming. And soon Let me know how the video and audio quality is, guys. Thank you all for coming through. Now, it used to be that as a console designer, you'd somehow intuit what would be the best set of capabilities for the new console, and then build it in complete secrecy. For the PlayStation consoles, that period lasted through PlayStation 3, a powerful and groundbreaking console, but also one that caused quite a lot of heartache, as it was initially difficult to develop games for. So starting with PlayStation 4, we've taken a different approach, roughly centered around three principles. The first of these is listening to the developers, which is to say that a lot of what we put into a console derives directly from the needs and aspirations of the game creators. We definitely do have some ideas of our own, but at the core of our philosophy for designing consoles is that game players are here for the fantastic games. Facts. Which is to say that game creators matter. Let's get Anything we can do to make life easier for the game creators or help them realize their dreams, we will do. So about once every two years, I take a tour of the industry. I go to the various developers and publishers, sit down, and discuss how they're doing with the current consoles and what they'd like to see in future consoles. This requires weeks on the road, as reaching the bulk of the game creators involves talking to well over 100 people at something like two dozen publishers and developers. And it is incredibly valuable. By the way, the feature most requested by the developers, that was an SSD which we were very happy to put in the hardware, but a lot of problem solving was required. I'll be doing a deep dive on the SSD and surrounding systems later on in this talk. It's also key to make a generational leap while keeping the console sufficiently familiar to game developers. Shout out to 37 viewers. Make sure you please smash like button and subscribe. Revolution. Now, with PlayStation 1, 2, and 3, the target was a revolution each time with a brand new feature set. That was great in many ways, but time for the developers to get up and running got longer with each console. In the past, I've called this timed triangle. Here's what I had for those three consoles. To be clear, I'm not talking about time to make a game. Developers will be ambitious, and it may take them six years or so to realize their vision. What I'm talking about is that dead time before graphics and other aspects of game development are up and running, and trying to minimize that. On the other hand, if we're trying to reduce that dead time to is zero, that, Dana that means the hardware architecture uh, can't I, I think this is the person, yeah. We need to judge for Shout each to the 40 what viewers. value it adds and whether it's worth the increase in developer time needed to support it. Please subscribe. So with PlayStation 4, we were able to strike a pretty good balance between performance and familiarity. We got required learning back to PlayStation 1 levels. With PS5, the GPU was definitely the area we felt the most tension between adding new features and keeping a familiar programming model. Ultimately, I think we've ended up with something under a month of getting up to speed. That's nice. That feels like we're striking about the right balance. I'll go into a bit more detail later today about our philosophy with the GPU and the specific feature set that resulted from it. It's also very important for us as the hardware team to find new dreams, by which I mean something other than CPU performance, GPU performance, and the amount of RAM. The increase in graphics performance over the past two decades has been astonishing, but there are other areas in which we can innovate and provide significant value to the game creators and through them, the players. That's why the SSD was very much on our list of directions to explore, regardless of what came out of the conversations with game developers and publishers. The biggest feature in this category is the custom engine for audio. That's today's final topic. 
The push for vastly improved audio, and in particular, 3D audio, isn't something that came out of the developer meetings. It's much more the case that we had a dream of what might be possible five years from now, and then worked out a number of steps we could take to set us on that path. 3D so here again audio. are the three principles. The first being That's enabling the desires of developers to drive the hardware design. To me, the SSD really is the key to the next generation. It's a, a game changer. And it was the number one ask from developers for PlayStation 5. As in, we know it's probably impossible, but can you put an SSD in there? That was a discussion we were also having in Stitch, this is weird. It was clear that the presence of a yeah, this was meant to be at GDC, so that's why it's like a formal a presentation, impact. guys. A lot of things that would simply have been impossible. So there Ray may not be a game, which I mentioned that before. At the same time, though, in 2015 and 2016, when we were having is that a JPEG of people watching, or are they just very still? Good question. I'll check again. And a lot of developer time was being spent designing around slow load speeds. I want to focus in on just one number here, which is how long it takes to load a gigabyte of data from a hard drive. The difficulty being that hard drives are neither particularly fast nor flexible. If all your data is in one block, which is frankly not very likely, you can load 50 to 100 megabytes a second, depending on where the data is located on the hard drive. Let's assume it's on the outer edge, which means loading a gigabyte takes time. Stanislav, for the stream, yes, uh, it is the max. Fit more data on the Blu-ray disc and also effectively boost your hard drive read speed by the compression ratio. And thank you we so much, Stanislav, for coming to the stream today. I appreciate before, it. The reason why it is 480p, like I was having an issue the other day with my live stream at 1080, so I had to drop it down. Unfortunately, though, I had to keep it at this for now. That your data is scattered around in various Thank you for coming through, Stanislav. I appreciate it. As well as sourced from multiple locations within those files. So lots of seeks are needed at 2 to 50-ish milliseconds each. My rule of thumb is that the hard drive is spending two-thirds of its time seeking and only a third of its time actually loading data. Putting all of that together, a gigabyte is very roughly 20 seconds to load from a hard drive. Now, a gigabyte is not much data. Games are using five or six gigabytes of RAM on PlayStation 4, so boot times and load times can get pretty grim. Or to put that differently, as a player, you wait for the game to boot, wait for the game to load, Wait for the level to reload every time you die, and you wait for what is euphemistically called fast travel. <laughs> and all of that leads to the dream. What if we could have not just uh, You're welcome, Stanislav, anytime, and thank you for coming to the stream. System. If we could load five gigabytes a second from it, what would change? Now, SSDs are completely Thank you so much, Danny Slap, for subscribing to the channel. We do live reactions like this, gameplay reviews, and tons of other stuff here. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you subscribing. So memory is bigger. Instead, we should be asking how long to load two gigabytes. And the answer is about a quarter of a second. That's amazing. We're talking two orders of magnitude, meaning very roughly 100 times faster. The load time in the original PS4 is one gigabyte in 20 seconds, but in the new one, it's a quarter of a second for two gigabytes because of the SSD. That's wild, guys. That's really good. A half dozen gigabytes and fades back up again. Same for a reload. You're immediately back in the action after you die. And fast travel becomes so fast, it's blink and you miss it. As game creators, we go from trying to distract the player from how long fast travel is taking, like those Spider-Man subway rides, to being so blinding. Yo, Jake, fast I don't know if you're still here, but, have to slow that but was it Jake or was it Allspark? Was it Pretty that? cool, right? But for oh, me, Stitch. This is not Stitch. I think that is a JPEG of people or something. It's not moving. <laughs> None of them are like moving to scratch their head or write anything. Like those people aren't there, guys. <laughs> those people in the, in the crowd aren't there. That the hard drive, the because of the whole epidemic right now. That's weird. Can sabotage the game that the developer is trying to create. I think almost all of us in the room have experienced this, maybe in different ways. Say we're making an adventure game and we have two rich environments where we each want enough textures and models to fill memory. Which you can do as long as you have a long staircase or elevator ride or a windy corridor where you can ditch the old assets and then take 30 seconds or so to load the new assets. Having a 30 second elevator ride is a, a little extreme. More realistically, we'd probably chop the world into a number of smaller pieces and then do some calculations with sight lines and run speeds like we did for 
Haven City when we were making Jack 2. The game is 20 years old, but not much has changed since then. Are we getting a new All Jack? Those twisted I was going to say this before, and I was like, nah, they ain't going to make a new Jack game. game. Not saying that they are going to make a new Jack game, but, but bruh, still, this could be a hint. A giant <laughs> distraction for a team that this could be a hint of a remastered trilogy of Jack, guys. So when I talked about the dream just a hint. of SSD, we'll see. part of the reason for that 5 gigabyte a second target was to eliminate loads. But yeah, a realist, that is, that, that is. <laughs> As in, what if the SSD was it's, so it, it, it is. that it's just as the realist to come through. Thank you for coming. How you it's been? It's possible to load textures for everything behind the player in that split second. If you figure that Stitch, it takes like half we a era E3 presentations. Four gigabytes of compressed data. Well, well, Stitch, uh, GDC is a bunch of keynote next. presentations, and that's what this is. It's Back basically a keynote presentation. Another strategy for increasing effectiveness. So, for me, I'm not surprised that this is how it is. For me, personally, I'm not surprised. For example, we might group all the data together for each city block. That removes Dang, most bro, of the I don't want to hear Sony Goat saying our presentation was but better. But there's a downside, too. Bruh. Which is that frequently used data is included What do you mean many presentation chunks, was better? Is on the hard drive <laughs> many, many times. Trippin'. Marvel's Anyone who says that's trippin'. Strategy, Dang. And though it works very well for increasing the streaming speed, there's a massive duplication as a result. Some of the objects, like mailboxes or news racks, are on the hard drive 400 times. What I'm describing here are things that cramp a creative director's style. Either level design gets a little bit boring in places, or the data is duplicated so many times that it no longer fits on the Blu-ray disc. And you end up with hard limits on the player's run speed or driving speed. The player can't go faster than the load speed from the hard drive. And finally, I'm sure many of you have noticed that after a patch download, the PlayStation 4 will sometimes take a long time to install the patch. Yes, which is stupid. That's because when just part of a file has been changed, the new data can be downloaded pretty quickly. But before the game boots up, a brand new file has to be constructed that includes the changed portion. Ugh. Otherwise, every change would add a seat or two. Even so, you can occasionally see this happening on game titles. So that's why on the PS4 there's so many issues of installing and stuff. With an SSD, though, no seeps. So no need to make brand new files with the changes incorporated into them, which means no installs as you know them today. There's yet one more benefit, which is that system memory can be used much more efficiently. On PlayStation 4, game data on the hard drive feels very distant and difficult to use. By the time you realize you need a piece of data, it's much too late to go out and load it. So system memory has to contain all of the data that could be used in the next 30 seconds or so of gameplay. That also, means I bet they're cardboard the cutouts. <laughs> hey, they may be. They may just, just be cardboard cutouts, be guys. <laughs> On PlayStation 5, though, the SSD is very close to being like more RAM. Typically, it's fast enough that when you realize you need a piece of data, you can just load it from the SSD. And Shouts to everyone here. There's Please no smash like button, subscribe if you're enjoying the presentation. And if used. you're enjoying watching along with me, of course, VCB Sips. That, Thank you, guys. Most of RAM Don't forget to smash like button, subscribe. This is one of the reasons that 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 feels right for PlayStation 5. The presence of the SSD reduces the need for a massive intergenerational increase in size. Mm. So back to the dream of the SSD. So the SSD the allows the RAM to not the game need the to be no load screens, multiplied, essentially. They don't need more RAM them, because they're no using SSD. Meaning no passages or nice. long corridors. More game on the disk and more game on the SSD. And finally, those patch installs go away. The reality, though, is that the SSD is just one piece of the puzzle. There's a lot of places where bottlenecks can occur in between the SSD and the game code that uses the data. You can see this on PlayStation 4. If I use an SSD with 10 times the speed of a standard hard drive, I probably see only double the loading speed, if that. For PlayStation 5, our goal was not just that the SSD itself be 100 times faster, it was that game loads and streaming would be a hundred times faster. A hundred so times faster? You're going to go for two times faster to a hundred times faster? And there are a lot of them. That's a leap. Let's look at check-in and what happens when it's overhead gets... Nah, that's a yeet more than a leap. Conceptually, <laughs> check-in is that's a crazy. pretty simple process. It's a long Data jump. Data is loaded into system memory from the hard drive or SSD. It's examined. A few values are tweaked to check it in. And then it's moved to its final location. At the SSD speeds we're talking about, that last part, moving the data, meaning copying it from one location to another, takes roughly an entire next-gen CPU core. 
And that's just the tip of the iceberg. If all the overheads get 100 times larger, that will cripple the frame rate as soon as the player moves, and that massive stream of data starts coming off the SSD. So to solve all of that, we built a lot of custom hardware, namely a custom flash controller and a number of custom units in our main shop. The flash controller in the SSD was designed for smooth and bottleneck-free operation, but also with games in mind. For example, there are six levels of priority when reading from the SSD. Priority is very important. You can imagine the player heading into some new location in the world and the game requesting a, a few gigabytes of textures. And while those textures are being loaded, an enemy is shot and has to speak a few dying words. Having multiple priority levels lets the audio for those dying words get loaded immediately. On one side, that flash controller connects to the actual flash dies that supply the storage. To reach our bandwidth target of 5 gigabytes a second, we ended up with a 12-channel interface. Eight channels wouldn't be enough. The resulting bandwidth we've achieved is actually 5.5 gigabytes a second. With a 12-channel interface, the most natural size that emerges... Shout out to Spesnaz. What's good? How you doing? Thank you for coming to the stream. The key question for us was, is that enough? I mean, it's tempting to add more, but Flash certainly doesn't come cheap, and we have... They are real people, the one on the far left just moved? Oh, really? Hmm. ...with regards to what we put in the console. I didn't notice that. Ultimately, we resolved this question by... Because like, that was the one time I wasn't looking at the crowd, of course. Of That's the one time they moved. We examined the <laughs> specific games that they were playing over the course of a weekend or a week or a month, and whether that set of games would fit properly on the SSD. We were able to establish that the friction caused by reinstalls or redownloads would be quite low, and so we locked in on that 825 gigabyte size while also preparing multiple strategies so that those who want more storage can add it. I'll go through the details in a moment. Back to the flash controller. On the other side, it connects to our main custom chip via four lanes of Gen 4 PCIe. And inside the main custom chip is a pretty hefty unit dedicated to I.O. Before we talk about what that does, let's talk compression for a moment. PlayStation 4 used Zlib as its compression format. We decided to use it again on PlayStation 5, but on my 2017 tour of developers, I learned about a new format called Kraken from Rad Game Tools. It's like Zlib's smarter cousin. Simple, uh, similar types of algorithms, but about 10% better compression, which is pretty big. That means 10% more game on the UHD Blu-ray disc or on the SSD. Kraken had only been Stitch, out Everyone else has been in the same unmoving position the entire time. time. Exactly. That's why it's so hard to notice. To also, it, I got the eagle eyes. <laughs> so we hustled Jake Miller, they're just told not to breathe because of the bug. Yeah, they're told to stay still and be like... <gasps> <laughs> and shout outs, Jake. I just subscribed to your Run Boys channel, man. That typically I just subscribed to it. I don't know if you got the notification or anything, but I actually just subscribed. It's capable of outputting as much as 22 gigabytes a second if the data happened to compress particularly well. By the way, in terms of performance, that custom decompressor equates to nine of our Zen 2 cores. That's what it would take to decompress the crack and stream with a conventional CPU. There's a lot more in the custom I.O. unit. Including a dedicated that lady on the right move. The game They're real people, exactly guys. They're real the people. <laughs> this equates to another Zen 2 core. That two one guy's got neck problems. problems. He probably does have neck problems, Stitch. <laughs> There's two dedicated I.O. coprocessors. Real and a quick, shout out to Stitch, shout out to Dink Neve, shout out to Gunslinger, shout out to Allspark, shout out to Jake Miller, shout out to El Real, shout out to Spesnaz. Shout out to Stanislav, shout out to Strider, shout out to We Am, and shout out to everyone watching. Thank you guys for watching along with me. We'll be continuing to stream for another 40 minutes because that's how much longer this presentation is going to take. The other is responsible for memory so. mapping, which I know doesn't sound like anything related to the SSD, but a lot of developers map and remap memory as part of file I.O., and this too can become a bottleneck. There are coherency engines to assist the coprocessors. Coherency comes up a lot in places. Probably the biggest coherency issue is stale data in the GPU caches. Flushing all of the GPU caches whenever the SSD is read is an unattractive option. It could really hurt the GPU performance. So we've implemented a gentler way of doing things, where the coherency engines inform the GPU of the overwritten address ranges, and custom scrubbers in several dozen GPU caches do pinpoint evictions of just those addresses.
The best thing is, as a game developer, when you read from the SSD, you don't need to know any of this. You don't even need to know that your data is compressed. You just indicate what data you'd like to read from your original uncompressed file and where you'd like to put it, and the whole process of loading it happens invisibly to you and at very high speed. Back to the dream. Thanks to all of that surrounding hardware, our 5.5 gigabytes a second really should translate into something like 100 times faster I.O. from PS4 and allow the dream of Like literally, you know, the one guy's neck is like... ...fast streaming to become a reality. Like that's how he's Having looking at that, the guy. <laughs> expandability of our SSD is going to be quite important. Flash is costly, and you may very well want to add storage to whatever we 5.5 SSD ain't that bad, but it now, is a little small. The kind of storage you need depends on how you're going to use it. If you have an extensive PlayStation 4 library and you'd like to take advantage of backwards compatibility to play those games on PlayStation 5, then a large external hard drive is ideal. You can leave your games on the hard drive and play them directly from there, thus saving the pricier SSD storage for your PlayStation 5 title, or you can copy your active PlayStation 4 titles to the SSD. If your purpose in adding more storage is to play PlayStation 5 titles, though, ideally you would add to your SSD storage. We will be supporting certain M2 SSDs. These are internal drives that you can get on the open market and install in a bay in the PlayStation 5. As for which ones we support and when, I'll get to that in a moment. They connect through the custom I.O. unit just like our SSD does. So they can take full advantage of the decompression, I.O. coprocessors, and all the other features I was talking about. Here's the catch, though. That commercial drive has to be at least as fast as ours. Games that rely on the speed of our SSD need to work flawlessly with any M2 drive. When I gave the Shout out to the 23 concurrent here, viewers. Make sure you smash like button, subscribe if you're enjoying. Faster than anything available on PC. Uh, presentation. At the time, commercial M2 drives used PCIe 3.0, and four lanes of that cap out at 3.5 gigabytes a second. In other words, no PCIe 3.0 drive can hit the required spec. M2 drives with PCIe 4.0 are now out in the market. We're getting our in uh, samples and seeing mm, four or five gigabytes a second from them. By year's end, I expect there will be drives that saturate 4.0 and support. For those who want to know, the official specs of the Having PlayStation that, 5 have been revealed. The official PS5 specs is 10.28 teraflops, 36 CUs at 2.23 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of GDR6, 256-bit memory bandwidth with 448 gigabytes per second. That's the official specs of the PS5. I just I just read it just now, guys. It, it just got released. Up a drive with only two and it's confirmed because of this that the PS5 will be a tiny bit weaker than the Xbox Series X because of this. But that doesn't matter because the PS5 will hopefully have games. Xbox Series X only has Hellblade and Halo Infinite, and that's it. PS5 has many opportunities for games. They have Godfall. They have... Uh, Spider-Man, that the new one that's coming out, uh, they should have a bunch of other stuff on the way, hopefully. So hopefully it happens. And for those who are here, I hope you guys didn't leave and miss out because I just mentioned the exact specs that they didn't release here, and they just released it on Twitter. So <laughs> it's there. When games hit beta as they get ready for the PlayStation Five launch, but hey, maybe because it's 10.28 teraflops, it's cheaper. Maybe particular M2 drives isn't than the Series X. We'll see. We'll see. Once we've done that compatibility testing, we should be able to start letting you know which drives will physically fit and which drive samples have... Yeah, Gunslinger, now the Xbox fans are going to have a field day with this since the Series X does have more teraflops. Yeah, they're going to have a field day. But hey, this could be a $400 console instead of a $500 console, so... Okay. Back I'd rather pay 400 to 500. Balancing <laughs> evolution and revolution is the second of them. This was Oh shit, we're only on the second one. I thought this was going to be a 52-minute presentation. What? We need new GPU features and capabilities. If if we only have more performance, it's not really a new generation of The Xbox, the course, Xbox boys getting ready to hate on Sony's performance. That's part of what Y'all wild in the chat, guys. <laughs> PlayStation 4 teraflop. But we aren't just looking for the performance. We also need the ability to do something with the GPU that could not have been done before. And we need higher performance for why? Every time we double the performance of some GPU component, we don't want to find out we've doubled the power consumed and the heat reduced. 
But at the same time, we have to make sure... If we can hit 20 likes, that'd be amazing. Thank you, guys. And we have to ensure that the architecture is easy for the developers to adopt. Now, backwards compatibility was handled masterfully by AMD. They treated it as a key need throughout the design process. As our solution to adding new features without blindsiding Wait a developers, second. we made sure that if there were new significant features, Bruh. it would be <laughs> Kid Smooth, what are you doing, bro? Kid Smooth is the streaming the road to PS5. What? You can release your first game on PlayStation 5 without making. Why? <laughs> and he has the thumbnail as Planet Xbox. Oh my like god. You're a funny dude, features. bro. <laughs> first, we have a custom <laughs> AMD fuck? GPU That's based hilarious. on their RDNA. Oh no, that, I, I find that what funny. Does that mean? AMD is continuously improving the revised Now that's team. weird. For RDNA 2, their goals were, roughly speaking, to reduce power wow, consumption by... I, I, I was looking at something else, not, not about Kismu after that. I was looking at something different, but to wow. Optimize the GPU for performance Shouts to everyone who's here. Thank you guys for coming to the stream. Features. Hope you guys are having fun. Smash the like button, subscribe. is malleable, which is to say that we have a, our own needs for PlayStation, and that can factor into what the AMD roadmap becomes. So collaboration is born. If we bring concepts to AMD that are felt to be widely useful, then they can be adopted into RDNA 2 and used broadly, including in PC GPUs. If the ideas are sufficiently specific to what we're trying to accomplish, like the GPU cache scrubbers I was talking about, then they end up being just for us. If you see a similar discrete GPU available as a PC card at roughly the same time as we release our console, that means our collaboration with AMD su succeeded uh, in producing technology useful in both worlds. It doesn't mean that we as Sony simply incorporated the PC part into our console. This continuous improvement in AMD technology means it's dangerous to rely on teraflops as an absolute indicator of performance, and CU count should be avoided as well. In the case of CPUs, we all understand this. The PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 each have eight CPUs, but we never think that meant the capabilities and performance are equal. It's the same for CUs. For one thing, they've been getting much larger over time. Adding new features means adding lots of transistors. In fact, uh, the transistor count for a PlayStation 5 CU is 62% larger than the transistor count for a PlayStation 4 CU. Second, the PlayStation 5 GPU is backwards compatible with PlayStation 4. What does that mean? One way you can achieve backwards compatibility is to put the previous console's chipset in the new console, like we did with some PlayStation 3s. But that's, of course, extremely expensive. A better way is to incorporate any differences in the previous console's logic into the new console's custom chips, meaning that even as the technology evolves, the logic and feature set that PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro titles rely so on... So the leak is, is true! ...in backwards compatibility modes. One advantage of this strategy is that once backwards compatibility... The leak can console, only be backwards compatible with PS4. It's not as if a cost down will remove backwards compatibility like it did on PlayStation 3. Achieving this unification of functionality took years of efforts by AMD. Bruh. As any roadmap advancement... They just don't learn. Put everything backwards compatible. compatible. Running PS4 everything. and PS4 titles at boosted frequencies has also added complexity. Give us PS3 games and PS2 games and PS1 games, games on the PS5. Handle. Is it that Testing hard? On the title by title Why did that leak have to be true? Results Fuck. are excellent, though. We recently took a look That's at the top 100 PlayStation 4 titles as ranked by Playtime, and we're expecting almost all of them to be playable at launch on PlayStation 5. Almost all of them be playable, bruh. Look with at that. Bullshit. Features, as I said, PS4 is backwards only. Bruh, fuck out of here. But at the same time, not to require use of the new Because they're going to, like they even said, they eventually More removed PS2 GPUs compatibility from the PS3s. The so they're basically the saying eventually PS4 compatibility is going to be taken away from the PS5. Part, That's fucking trash, yo. Buy a cheap-ass PS3, I guess. Four. Yeah, you just gotta that find one for 50 bucks or something. Possible to do even uh, no reason to buy a PS3 for more than 50 bucks nowadays. Processing of the vertex if all geometry that uses Damn, it man. That's speed. so fucking trash. PlayStation 5 has a, a new unit. Yo, that's trash! Unit, which brings handling of triangles and other primitives under full programmatic control. As a game developer, you're free to ignore its existence and use the PlayStation 5 GPU as if it were no more capable than the PS4 GPU, or you can use this new intelligence in various ways. 
Simple usage could be performance optimization, such as removing back-based or off-screen vertices and triangles. More complex usage involves something called primitive shaders, which allow the game to synthesize geometry on the fly as it's being rendered. It's a brand new capability. Using primitive shaders on PlayStation 5 will allow for a, a broad variety of techniques, including smoothly varying level of detail, addition of procedural detail to close-up objects, and improvements to particle effects and other visual special effects. Another major new feature of our custom... Hey, this is John. Thank you so much for tuning in. And what's the bad news? Only backwards compatible for PS4. Not for PS3, not for PS2 or PS1 like everyone's been asking for for the past 10 years, Mr. John. Unfortunately, we have no backwards compatibility except for the PS4 for the first initial launch of the PS5. Similar to how when the PS3 launched initially, it had PS2 compatibility, but the PS3s later on had none. So, that's unfortunate. But shout out to the 25 concurrent viewers. Thank you guys for coming through. And we also learned today, Deceptive John, that the PS4, no, PS5, not the PS5, the PS5 has less teraflops than the Xbox Series X. Which Having that's unfortunate that, too. The ray tracing instruction is pretty memory intensive, so it's a good mix with logic heavy code. There's of course no need to use ray tracing. PS4 graphics engines will run just fine on PlayStation 5, but it presents an opportunity for those interested. I'm thinking it'll take less than a million rays a second to have a big impact on audio. That should be enough for audio occlusion and some reverb calculations. With a bit more of the GPU invested in ray tracing, it should be possible to do some very nice global illumination. Having said that, adding ray traced shadows and reflections to a traditional graphics engine could easily take hundreds of millions of rays a second, and full ray tracing could take billions. How far can we go? I'm starting to get quite bullish. I've already seen a PlayStation 5 title that's successfully using ray tracing based reflections in complex animated scenes with only modest costs. Another set of issues for the GPU. Yeah, this is John, it's really unfortunate. How big do we make the GPU and what frequency do we run it at? This is a balancing act. The chip has a cost and there's a cost for whatever we use to supply that chip. All they had to do was at least make everything general, backwards compatible. Running the and then people would have at least been like, all right, even you. if it's not as strong as the Xbox Here's Series X, the PlayStation would at least have games, even if it's the old the games. Of the PlayStation Just like how the Xbox One now is, is able to be backwards compatible with everything. Too seriously. Like, if bruh. If you just calculate teraflops, you get the same number. But actually, the performance is noticeably different because teraflops is defined as the computational capability of the vector AOU. That's just one part of the GPU. There are a lot of other units. And those other units all run faster when the GPU frequency is higher. At 33% higher frequency, rasterization goes 33% faster. Processing the command buffer goes that much faster. The L2 and uh, other caches have that much higher bandwidth, and so on. About the only downside is that... Shout out to the 21 concurrent viewers. If y'all could please smash the like button and please subscribe to the channel, I really would appreciate it, guys. Thank you guys so much. As a friend of mine says, a rising tide lifts all boats. Allspark. I wonder how many of these promises will be kept. Unfortunately, there isn't that many promises that are good so far, unfortunately. When triangles are small, it's much harder to fill all those CUs with useful work. So there's a lot to be said for faster. Assuming you can handle the resulting power and heat issues, which frankly we haven't always done the best job at. Part of the reason Jake Miller says I'm pretty concerned Sony may have lost before the race CPU even started. Game Pass looks even better. Heavy duty guesswork with regards to how much electricity. Seems like it, man. A lot of people were saying it from the jump that uh, as a result PS5 may end consumption. up being like the PS3, but power we'll see. We'll see. A lot from game to game. When I play God of War on my PS4 Pro, I know the power consumption is high just by the fan noise. But just by the fan noise, bro! You it's said about it! The that's being displayed. <laughs> it's that's hilarious. But processing dense geometry typically consumes less power than processing simple geometry. This better be a silent is, fan. I suspect why Horizon's map screen, with its low triangle count, makes my PS4 Pro heat up so much. Our process on previous consoles has been to try to guess what the maximum power consumption during the entire console. This other John says it's a complete exactly 180 from last gen launch. Xbox can't looking looking like hot garbage. Now it's Sony's turn to smell like trash. Unfortunately, that, that power level. 
I know that they were only going to talk about specs and stuff, but like, if we get it wrong, they could have done a way better job of how they're doing all this. I'm not a fan. And also, with a lot of things that they said, it's not good stuff. <laughs> it's not good stuff at all. It's very unfortunate. Yo, Kid Smooth's probably laughing his ass off in history. <laughs> That Xbox showed the system before the These specs, and yeah, I think that may be better. If they showed the system before the specs and then went into it, more people will be like invested in watching right now. Because people are like waiting to hope to see it. And if we don't see the PS5 after this presentation, people are gonna lose their minds, yo. People are gonna lose their minds. So, after much discussion, we decided to go with Yeah, it's secure. I don't understand the point of the cardboard cutout audience. Well, see, that's the thing. They're actually not cardboard cutouts. I thought they were cardboard too. Uh, a few of them are real. <laughs> a few of them are real, actually. 62% more transistors than the CPUs we were using on PlayStation 4. So if we compare transistor counts, 36 RDNA 2 CUs equates to roughly 58 PlayStation 4 CUs. It is a fairly sizable GPU. Then we went with a variable frequency strategy for PlayStation 5, which is to say we continuously run the GPU and CPU in boost mode. We supply a generous amount of electrical power and then increase the frequency of GPU and CPU until they reach the capabilities so John, to be honest, I'm super happy with just my Switch. It's Animal Crossing alone is going to keep me busy for the next few years. Yeah, Animal Crossing is one of those games where you can just keep putting time into it until there's no more time in the world left. <laughs> and Gunslinger says, PS3 is kind of hard to make backwards compatible, so I get why it can't be, but PS1 and PS2 shouldn't be hard, I think. Especially in 2020, bro. And by the time this console releases, it's going to be 2021. In some ways, May not even release at the end of this year. a problem because there are no more unknowns. There's no need to guess what power consumption the worst case game might have. As for the details of the cooling solution, we're saving them for our teardown. I think you'll be Stitch, quite They're all sleeping. That's why they seem fake. Bruh. I feel so you. I feel you on that. Run the GPU His, his voice is very, strategy. very... The simplest approach would be to look at the actual temperature of the silicon die and throttle the frequency of Tiring. Pieces. But that won't work. It that, I guess, is the best way to describe this guy's voice. Five experience. Makes me very tired. Yo, what's up, Chosen Rebel? Thank you for coming to the stream. How have you been, bro? Uh, we started about an hour and 15 minutes ago, and supposedly the presentation ends in 12 minutes. I really hope it actually ends in 12 minutes, please. <laughs> this is not... I thought they were going to at least make it feel a little lively, you know what I mean? Since they couldn't do this at GDC, like, change it up a little bit. It's like they didn't change it up at all. They had the same exact presentation they planned. benefits of this strategy are quite large. Running a GPU gigahertz was looking like an unreachable target with the old fixed frequency strategy. Put me to with sleep. new paradigm, we're, we're able to run way over that. In fact, we have to cap the GPU frequency at 2.23 gigahertz so that we can guarantee that the on-chip logic operates properly. 36 CUs at 2.23 Like, as someone who, who's bought every Sony console and, and played tons of Sony games... Oh, Chosen Rebel! Nope! Or close to That's a big nope! No backwards compatibility, Chosen Rebel. No backwards compatibility except for the PS4. So, nope. Sony didn't listen to us. Uh, Sony has less teraflops than Xbox Series X. That doesn't mean all games. No games. Uh, they mentioned that they understand that the fan roars when the games are too powerful for their own systems. Uh, this is this con this, this presentation has been really bad because like even this guy like he's, he's a good public speaker but his voice and cadence and how he's presenting is making us go to sleep. <laughs> it's making us go to sleep. Yeah, chosen rebel. No backwards compatibility, bro. Except for PS4. For and that's not even the worst part, Chosen Rebel. The worst part is that they even mentioned how in the PS3 generation, they eventually removed backwards compatibility, and they said that it's likely to happen again with future PS5s. They'll remove backwards compatibility for PS4. That's fucking stupid. That's fucking stupid, Sony. I feel the game is just dead without audio. Visuals are, of course, important, but the impact of audio... Oh, and they want to do 3D audio, big guys. They the want to go for time, 3D the audio. The audio game project has to do a lot with a little. For example, on PlayStation 4, there's fierce competition for the Jaguar CPU cores. Audio typically ends up getting just a... So, John, he'd be great for a meditation app, not it's for not hyping the PS5. Facts. I 100% agree. He'd be way better for, like, some sort of meditation app or something. Seven, like the ones that you get ads for on YouTube. At almost... He'd be perfect for that. <laughs> so, 
It's been tough going like the, like going the ad that goes audio the dark side of the mind and all that BS. PlayStation 3 was such a beast when it came to audio. And the stream is going for another 20 minutes, guys. I hope Almost a thank you guys for coming through. I really appreciate it. Simple pipelined algorithms could really take advantage of asynchronous DNA and frequently reached 100% utilization of the floating point unit. There's unfortunately nothing comparable on PlayStation 4. Probably the most dramatic progress in the PlayStation 4 generation has been with virtual reality. The PSVR hardware has its own audio unit. It supports about 50 pretty decent 3D sound sources. And this provided a hint as to where we could go with audio. Yeah, Allspark, well it's so bullshit, man. Experience. And nope, Chosen Rebel, they haven't even shown what it looks like either. Sure That's why no one's hype and everyone's falling asleep. <laughs> The first goal and Young Chosen Rebel are doing the same shit they did for the PS4 VR and PS3. The first shipment is going to be backwards compatible only. Yup, the, only the first shipment, which is bullshit. It couldn't so bull. And then the, the, the shipments the after are going to be the same price. Stupid. Of sound and nope, Christian, uh, they haven't shown it, but they've mentioned a lot of things that disappoint me, Christian. No backwards compatibility except for the first initial shipment with only PS4 backwards compatibility. Uh, less teraflops in the Xbox Series X. Uh... Now, when we a lot of presence, stuff that just isn't good so far, Christian. It's disappointing me, honestly. You've entered the matrix. And now they're caring about 3D audio. No, just give us what we want. <laughs> Show us the console at least. Jacob says, their issue, they're comparing it to the PS4. I get it. It's stronger, no crap. Like, obviously, it's the PS4. It's meant to be stronger. Facts, Jake. to have this feeling. This feeling of real presence inside the virtual world. Shout out to the 22 concurrent viewers. I hope you guys are enjoying the stream. Please smash the like button and please subscribe if you haven't already. If y'all can please subscribe and smash the like button, that'd help me out a lot, guys. The concept of locality is simpler. It's just your sense of where the audio is coming from. To the right of you, behind you, above you. This can immerse you further in the game, and it can also directly enhance the gameplay. To use Dead Space as an example, I know. Shouts to the 20 concurrent viewers. You're fighting enemies in fairly dark. They aren't even bringing up a Sony game. <laughs> Back in the day, this game was on Xbox 360. TV speakers, you could tell that there was one last enemy growling and hunting you down, but it was difficult to tell quite where that enemy was. With headphones, you could tell that the enemy was somewhere on the right, which lets you deduce, if you couldn't see it, that it must be somewhere behind and to your right. But with 3D audio with good locality, the idea is you know the enemy is precisely there. And you turn, and you take it out. So, how do we know where a sound is coming from in the first place? Well, all those bumps and folds in the ear have a meaning, evolutionarily speaking. Based on what direction the sound is coming from, sound waves bounce around inside the ear, there's some constructive and destructive interference, and the result is This is just says, Xbox knows it can clap that hard now. Yeah, they definitely can path path now. The sound wave took Easily. The ear canal. These like, honestly, it's kind of... Different for each direction. And we need to see the PS5. If we don't see the PS5, the then this entire also presentation in a was a waste. The way that this is very disappointing based on guys. direction and frequency can be encoded in the table called the head Same old spark. I'm trying the best as I can to enjoy it as well. And I'll be honest, the Here's first 20 problem. minutes was not the bad. The first 20 minutes was all right. After that first 20 minutes, it was like all right. And the color gives I feel like I'm in college listening to a two hour lecture, guys. Like. That, that's what it feels like right now. It feels like I'm in college listening to a two-hour lecture. In fact, you're looking at mine right now. Here's how we measure NHRTF. We've taken hundreds of people through this process. We put a microphone in the subject's left and right ear canal, and then sit the subject down in the middle of an array. Yeah, of Jake, bring, Jake, you're right. Xbox is bringing that PC tower energy from each speaker as we rotate the subject. In the course of 10 Chosen Rebel. 20 minutes, this is always reminds you of those nature videos you watch when a teacher needs a great stuff. 1, yeah, it reminds me of that too. Using That's totally true, bro. Audio I, I can see that. Quality, but it's computationally expensive. The simplest way to use an HRTF is to process a sound source to make it appear as if it's coming from one of those thousand locations we sampled. Unfortunately, the processing. This is what John says. If they don't show the PS5, it just shows that Sony is scrambling so to keep up. Yeah, it definitely shows that they're scrambling to keep up that. Especially if they don't show it. That's a lot of multiplies. This computational complexity. Shows the Rebel says, dude, I'm wondering if Sony got cocky and is just not trying because it thinks Sony and PlayStation is just strong enough reason to buy the console. They did it after the PS2 was successful. So it wouldn't surprise me if after the PS4 was successful, they do the same thing. That would not surprise me at all, bro. 
I definitely see that happening. The meaning of 3D audio and technology should be pretty obvious here. As for Tempest, I feel it really reflects our goals with audio. It suggests a certain intensity of experience and also hints at your presence within it. We're calling the hardware unit that we built the Tempest engine. It's based on AMD's GPU technology. We modified a compute unit in such a way as to make it very close to the SPUs in PlayStation 3. Remember when I said that they were ideal for audio? So the Tempest engine has no caches, just like an SPU. All data access is via DMA, just like Hey, SPU. Big Mix, thank you so the much for being here. I really appreciate that, bro. I'm just here so I won't get fined. Ah, thank you, man. Achieve. And then it TKR would be more I think Sony will do okay GPU as long as they have a decent price point and a good exclusive. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be $400, honestly. But if the Xbox Series X is also $400, then bruh, Series X wins. Where we ended up and that's not what we want. And by we, I mean me, because I had a 360 and I loved my 360. And I also had the original Xbox and I loved it. But my Xbox One was horrible. I fucking hated that shit. I hated it. But of the course, fucking interface on the Xbox One, especially when it first released, like oh. and even games. now, oh, it's horrible. It would have been horrible interface. If a I hate moving around in that interface. Using Dolby like Apple's Sony, they have a great interface. Nintendo Switch, so they got a great interface. Audio for all. They're all good. Not just those with yeah, dang. Everyone's, everyone's playing also, the Switch right now. I should be playing the Switch right now, honestly. Because like... And finally, we Fuck, wanted man. to be able to throw an overwhelming amount of processing power at the problem. And it wasn't clear what any peripheral might have inside of it. In fact, with the Tempest engine, we even got enough power that we can allocate some to the games, to the extent that games want to make use of Convolution Weaver and other algorithms that are either computationally expensive or need high bandwidth. But the primary purpose of the Tempest engine remains 3D audio. Now, 3D audio is a major academic. Jake Mill says topic. Xbox 360 is my favorite system of the 2000s. Yeah, for me, it's the, the 360 and the GameCube. Those two are my consoles. Hands down, those are my favorites. Is immense. For example, use Chosen of. Chosen Rebel, what is 3D sound? Is it's exactly what they've been trying to explain for the past 10 minutes, actually. Chosen Rebel, they were trying to explain this for the past 10 minutes. HRTF sample locations. And uh, high quality 3D game that's what they're trying to show right here. <laughs> Basically, the this is the 3D audio that they're talking about. Locations. This so entire you thing you're, the you're the seeing on screen, HRTF 3D audio, utilizing our HRTF production. samples. The sound source might be moving. Which yeah, Gold Sun's so dope. We're playing on a GBS P2. Nice stitched. Phase artifacts in the Big Mix, he audio. sounds like he's talking us into a movie like Get Out. Big Mix. That's 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 facts. That's facts. There's also whole categories. So, you know, I still have my PCR white Xbox One. It's a love hate relationship between us. LOL. But alternatively, I Ambisonics hated mine. I got rid of that shit audio. so fast. Ambisonic speak somewhat like the spherical harmonics. Shout out to everyone who's here. Shout out to Chosen Rebel. Shout out to TKR Vid. Shout out to Jake Miller. Shout out to Deceptive John. Shout out to All Spark. Shout out to Stitch. Shout out to Matthew Hammond. Shout out to Gunslinger. Shout out to everyone who's here. We am Gamer. Thank you all so much. That's a lot. Matthew Hammond says, you know, this is not meant for consumer viewing. This is meant for developers of GDC. Yeah, I know that this is meant for viewers of GDC. But is going to be a multi-year they could have started with showing the console having said that headphone audio implementation it'd be nice if they shown the console uh, it was a natural place that'd be nice to start with headphones and yeah exactly matthew they should, they should put this guy out of his misery and the algorithm oh they definitely should with the way this has been because he's not a bad for public speaker don't get me wrong but for a presentation like this I think we need students. someone with a little more the vigor, a little more oomph, you know what I mean? TV. And you're and welcome to such a Don. I'm glad I'm able to host this for you guys. Thank you all for coming through. Mind. The presentation's supposed to be going Which on for another few minutes because it was leaked originally. That's supposed to be a 52-minute presentation. The left ear can hear so this the should be done in about four minutes, guys. And then we'll wrap up the stream with five minutes left, talk about last minute stuff about what we saw or attempted to see. Which is to say, making the area you need to be in to yeah, we am. This really isn't that great. Larger. And, and we're Chosen Rebel. So 3D sound, sound is nothing that we asked for. Yep, they spent 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, talking about 3D sound. That's what we've been dealing with for the past 15 minutes, guys. Big news. How you spend 30 minutes talking about SSD? They spent a while on SSD. They spent a while on SSD. They spent a while on backwards compatibility and the lack thereof. And, uh... 
3D audio, audio was, which no one wanted either. Toggle between conventional PlayStation 4 stylus. Yeah, I'll swear, if I wasn't sitting up like this and if I was laying in bed or something, I'd be sleeping. I listened with just an ordinary pair of over-the-ear headphones. Those are right. At least show the console and then say, here's what's new. 3D audio what, has what day one games could be there. Why should you even get this console? Facts. Those are well, exactly how it should have been. Improvement is if, if they at least show it at the end, so, it would be like, all right, validation. Have I entered but the matrix? Does my brain at this rate, I don't think we're getting it. Guys, like I, was talking I don't think about we're getting it. When I, explained I don't think they're going to show us. Present. Well, the answer is no. Facts, Deceptor John. Tim Horns in a good sativa. Facts, bro. Facts. It was That's Tiva got me through this too, bro. <laughs> the audio team analyzed the hundreds that they measured and chose the one they felt was the closest fit to the total game playing audience. This shows a, a piece of the defense. Yo, OJ's been streaming and, and he isn't even watching it. <laughs> He's been playing his Nintendo Switch the whole time, the guys. That's hilarious. <laughs> With the default HRT app, like he's said, literally just playing the, the switch this sound. whole time doing the presentation. When I use wow, that's HRT wild. I wish I, wish the I could audio do that. <laughs> at the higher level of realism, which is to say that when Sony finna get Twitter bombed. Hell yeah, chosen HRT rebel. App, they're gonna get occasionally get fucking bombed. In videos on YouTube, they're gonna get bombed. World, Tweets, they're gonna get bombed. Sony's gonna get destroyed. Matthew Hammond says, I think the 3D audio is Dolby Atmos without paying the licensing fee. Yeah, you know what? That's probably what it is, honestly. That's probably what they're doing, trying to make their own variation of it. Yeah, just after John. He ain't even watching it. He has the scene going for 500 people, but he ain't even watching it. Like, bruh, I thought he said in the he said in the chat before the stream started. Oh, forget it. Forget it. Me and him have a personal inside joke that we have going on right now. <laughs> I'd like everyone to be able to experience what I'm experiencing, but obviously oh it's not God. possible to measure the HRTF of every PlayStation user. Also, I says, I need to get a switch after this. Honestly, you may have to, man. Are going to be this is John. The memes will be Sony's downfall. The and the memes! The memes! At PlayStation 5 launch, they're going to make so many memes, guys. Shout out to the 22 a, group viewers. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'll be honest, I'm not anymore. I'm enjoying the stream of us hanging out together. You'll be sending us a Photo of your ear, and we'll choose a neural network to pick the closest Why? HRTF in our life. These guys have an ear fetish. They just asked us video. to send them a photo of our and ear. And we'll they just asked us to send them a photo of our ear. HRTF. They have an ear fetish. Get out of here. What? Tune your HRTF. We'll be subtly changing it as you play and home in on the HRTF that gives you the highest score, meaning that it matches you the best. This is a, a journey we'll all be taking together over the next few years. Ultimately, we're committing to enabling everyone to experience that next level of realism. Hopefully, I've been able to illustrate a bit about our design and decision-making process today and why PlayStation 5 has the... They legit have an ear fetish. fetish. What the fuck? Now, Sony, the fun Mark Cerny, what the hell? The development community you want advantage of that people feature. to send pictures of I'm their ears? Completely Get out of here, like Sony. Audio, what the fuck ray is that? The capabilities of the SSD. Matthew Hammond, V Sys makes 100% the we'll effort. Yo, thank you so much. I, 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 I try my best of all this content. Thank you for your time. They didn't even show it? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me, man? Are you serious? Are you serious? Fuck you, Sony. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you, Sony. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Rip Sony. Rip PS5. Buying Xbox Series X. Fuck you, Sony. Fuck you, Sony. Not even one game to show a demo of what the hardware even looks like. You can't even do that. I understand this was originally for GDC. I 100% get that. But this has been... GDC has been cancelled for almost a month. They could have threw anything in here as something extra just to change it up and make it with a little flair. You know what I mean? They even showed the Xbox Series X when Xbox showed it three months ago. And we still don't know what the PS5 looks like. PS5, as I foretold, because I am a prophet, I said this last year, PS5 is going to go out like the PS3 and this is a fact. Anyone who says otherwise is wrong. PS5 is going to go out like the PS3. Take care of it. It's calm down, VC. <laughs> Shout out to the 26 current viewers. But yo, Strider just woke up. I almost fell asleep too, bro. 
But damn, what a horrible way. No backwards compatibility with PS3 and PS2 and PS1 or PS4 after the first initial shipment of PS5s. Uh, less teraflops than the Xbox Series X. And they tried making it like the CUs for the GPU are going to make a difference. No, it's not. It ain't making a difference for shit. Stop lying. Uh, and then 3D audio. No one gave a fuck about that. No one wanted that. That's like uh, the the rumble, that, that special rumble that they have for Nintendo Switch. No one asked for it. Do people like it? Most people turn it off for video games. So, I don't know. I think Sony messed the fuck up. I think Sony is going to get dragged through the mud. They should have not even done this presentation. They should have not even done this presentation. So, for those who are here, we have a few minutes before I have to wrap up the stream. Let me know your thoughts. Shout out to Chosen Rebel, Decepta John, Allspark, Gunslinger, Stitched, TKR Vids, Jake Miller, Dank Meme, everyone who's here. I appreciate all of you for being here. And yeah, that's totally true, Strider. Well, last time Xbox messed up and Sony learned how to fuck up now. Lessons learned and hope the internet will rip them to shreds. Yeah, they honestly may deserve to be ripped to shreds, honestly. They may. It's really unfortunate, guys. I did not want this to happen. I did not hope for this to happen. I hoped for at least to showcase at least a little bit of what the system looks like. At least even that, if they couldn't even show a demo of something, you know what I mean? And no, 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 Matthew, Xbox is gonna be five hundred dollars. I agree. I, I, I bet with you, it's gonna be uh, five hundred for the Series X, and for the PS4 with less teraflops and stuff, it's gotta be four hundred. If this system's any more than four hundred, I wouldn't buy it. The PS5, I would not buy it if it's more than four hundred. And yeah, everyone here in the chat's agreeing. Series X is day one now because of this. So if that's how y'all feel, that's wild. Especially since everyone here did ask yesterday for us to watch this. So that's crazy how Sony basically just said, we don't give a shit about our consumers. That's basically what they said because we wanted backwards compatibility for everything. We wanted more, more usage of teraflops, better console overall. Because everything, even from the gigahertz and all that, is less than xbox series x so what are your guys thoughts let me know in the chat allspark says i will not shed a tear for sony's funeral <laughs> me either man me either i can't wait to watch oj's reaction later because uh after the stream, I have personal stuff I gotta do, but hearing OJ's reaction after it ends, oh my god, it's probably hilarious. So, thank you guys all so much for coming to the stream tonight. And yeah, I guess Sony buried itself, Chosen Rebel, I agree. And uh, Chosen Rebel also says, so they didn't give us what we wanted, put extra shit that we didn't ask for, and still thinks it's okay to not show us the console. And a price. Not a price either. And yeah, Chosen Rebel says, also says, I agree, they should have not even done this, we could have waited. Definitely, we could have waited. They should have just skipped the whole GDC presentation that they originally had. Because that's literally what they gave us. They gave us the exact same GDC presentation that they had. And they didn't even try to add anything with the whole month of extra time that they had. That shows laziness. That shows complacency after the success of the PS4. That's just like the complacency they had after the PS2. And that's a bad sign, guys. That's a really bad sign. But you know what else is a bad sign? That we don't have 25 likes. If y'all could smash like button so we can hit 25 likes, I really would appreciate that, guys. Thank y'all so much. Shouts to Matthew Hammond. Shouts to Dank Meme. Shouts to Strider. Shouts to All Spark. Shouts to Chosen Rebel. Shouts to everyone who's been watching today. I appreciate all of you guys who come to the stream. Uh, before we wrap up, we're not wrapping up yet. We still have a little more that we're gonna do, a little more we're gonna talk about, and a little more that we're gonna do, and a little more we're gonna talk about is my brand new music video, my brand new video. I want you guys to check it out. If y'all could please raid my new video, I would really appreciate it, guys. Please raid my new video and smash the like button. And comment, too, if you can. I really would appreciate it. Uh, we had a pretty dope stream. Make sure we hit 25 likes if we can. Thank you guys so much. If y'all could please raid my new video, I really would appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for coming to the stream. Uh, we had an amazing stream tonight. Uh, I hope you all had a fun time. And uh, yeah, we'll be wrapping up. All right, guys. See you, everyone. See you, Jake. See you, Matthew. See you, everyone here.
Hope you all have a good night, everyone, and a good day. And I'll see you all tonight for the broadcast episode 15 or 16. Not sure, but we'll find out then. Peace.